All sports physical therapists should learn these three program design principles. Number one involves central nervous system stress. It's important to know that power or dynamic effort training, moving submaximal weights as fast as possible, involves very high CNS output, but it doesn't cause a lot of CNS fatigue. This is a great training strategy in season, but it doesn't develop max strength. Max strength or hypertrophy training, moving heavier loads closer to failure, creates more CNS fatigue. Great for max strength, but it does come at the expense of jump height and speed for about the next 48 to 72 hours. Principle number two, yielding versus stiff plyometrics. Yielding plyometrics with deeper knee bending like these split squat jumps are great for breaking down inhibition, getting athletes comfortable absorbing and creating force through a long runway. This is really important after injuries. Stiff plyometrics by contrast, like approach jumps or drop jumps, emphasize rate of force development, fast force expression, and tend to localize stress. Both have their own time and place within training and rehab. And then principle number three is bone stress. Having a cross country runner perform pogos and single leg hops early in the morning may be a great stimulus for bone mineral density. But that same plyometric training session performed when the athlete's in a nutritional deficit, during a high volume run week, or just in the afternoon after a long run when the bone is more deaf to load after repeated loading cycles may actually do more harm than good. It's important to consider all these outside factors when it comes to plyometrics and bone mineral density. If you wanna join other sports physios, trainers, and coaches learning strength and conditioning principles to expand their knowledge and practice, comment plyos for more information about our CEU approved course, Plyometrics 101.